Rahim, dear brothers and sisters, Salaamu Alaikum and Merry Christmas. And welcome to this very special program on Christmas Day with me, the host, Sayyid Mahdi Abidi. As you know, Christmas is a very important occasion for our brothers and sisters from the religion of Christianity. But today we are going to discuss a very important topic, and that is the importance of the status of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the religion of Islam. Today I am joined by a very special guest who will most certainly enlighten us about the status of Prophet Jesus in Islam, Sayyid Farazdaq Radawi. Just a quick biography of the Sayyid before I introduce him. He studied in the Hausa of Qum for nine years, during which he completed his bachelor's and master's in Islamic jurisprudence. And he is one of the uh, resident alims at Babul Murad and the head of the Sunday Madrasa at Babul Murad Center. And he's also the son of Malana Sayyid Zulqada Radawi and the nephew of Ayatollah Aqil Radawi. Sayyidna, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you? Alaikum Assalamu wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, how are yourself? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for joining me. And, you know, I, I've been thinking about this topic for a long time. It's a very important topic because there's a lot of misconceptions, unfortunately, especially with our brothers and sisters and, and the religion of Christianity uh, and the role that Jesus plays in Islam itself. It's a very, he's one of the prophets, you know, he's one of our main prophets. And it's very important for them, inshallah, with this program, inshallah, we can sort of uh, get rid of most of the misunderstandings and the misconceptions and inshallah we can help both our brothers and sisters in Islam and also uh, uh, in, in Christianity that may be watching on, on Christmas Day. So Sayyidna, just introduce, introduce to us the status and inshallah we can begin. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al-Layn Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wal Aqibatu Lil Muttaqeen Wal Jannatu Lil Muwahideen Wal Naru Lil Mulhideen Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Sayyid Al Anbiya Wal Mursaleen Habib Al Mumajjad Abil Qasim Al Mustafa Muhammad Wa Ala Al Bayta Tayyibin Al Tahirin Al Ma'asumin Wa Laanatullahi Ala Aadaihim Wa Qasib Al Hukukahim Wa Qatilihim Ajma'in أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في قرآنه المجيد وفرقانه الحبيب قوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة من حسمه المسيح مسيح إيسا بن مريم وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين this ayat of the Holy Quran, of surah, part of Surah Ali Imran, ayat 45, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, when he ordered the angels to say, O oh Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him, whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, distinguished in this world and in the hereafter, and amongst those who brought near to Allah. I mean, just from this ayat of the Holy Quran, we are able to understand the importance of whether you want to call Prophet Jesus or Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. It shows the importance of the Prophet in our school of thought. And not just that, if you look at the Quran as a whole, firstly, you have a whole surah by the name of Surya Maryam in regards to the mother of Hazrat Isa. Second, you have Surah Ali Imran which is about the lineage or talks about the lineage of Hazrat Isa and at the same time you have Surah Maida. And what is <clears throat> known to us in regards to Hazrat Isa is that he is one of the greatest of prophets and this is proof that with with himself Jesus bought the book of God the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which in our language in Arabic is called Injil and in the English language we call it the Testament or the Old Testament and the New Testament a mix of both or in modern days most famously known as the Bible. And when we look at Hazrat Isa and Islam, 
we see that the teachings of Hazrat Isa are not different to the teachings of Islam. The fact that we accept him as one of our prophets. I mean, we all believe, if you look at <clears throat> all three of the monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, we see that we all believe in the concept of prophethood. The prophethood of 124,000 prophets. In our eyes, we believe that Hazrat Isa is the second to last prophet before Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that he prepared <clears throat> mankind and society at that time for the appearance of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as did the prophets prior to Hazrat Isa. We see that every when we look at or when we study prophets, we see that they've always prepared society. For the coming of the next prophet and when we study the quran we see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that i have only sent one religion but i have sent numerous jurisprudences when we look at the basic concept of the monotheistic religions we see that there are three fundamentally binding rules to these three religions that is the oneness of God, prophethood, and the Day of Judgment. These three pillars are the same and hold the same belief in all three religions. And when we look at our laws, whether it be the laws of Christianity, laws of Islam, or laws of Judaism, they all come into existence from these three. And we see that even the laws <coughs> that... <coughs> And I would say that between our school, between our religions, I wouldn't even say religions. I would say between our three schools of thought. Because as far as I'm concerned, we are of one religion. But our thoughts are different. We have far more commonalities between our schools of thought than differences. Especially when it comes in regards to prophethood. And when we look at these three religions, what the most simple, basic message that every prophet has brought is the betterment of mankind. All of our laws are based upon the betterment of mankind. And when we look at the miracles of Prophet Isa, I mean, in the whole of Quran, there have been six miracles of the holy prophet isa which have been mentioned that the miracles of the first miracle is that prophet isa spoke from the cradle the second is creating birds from clay the third healing the blind and the lepers <clears throat> fourth was raising the dead fifth was prescience meaning that he was able to foretell the future and have the knowledge of the future the sixth is the table of food from heaven which is a whole surah in itself surah Ma'idah. we see that these are the six greatest miracles of Hazrat Isa which have been men mentioned in the holy quran i mean there are numerous other mentions of the miracles of Hazrat Isa but these are the six more famous in the holy quran <clears throat> and at the same time when we look at the mention of Hazrat Isa in the holy quran we see that he is one of the most mentioned prophets in our holy book. In the holy Quran, we see that he has been mentioned through various names. We look at the first is Isa in itself. He's been called by his name. The second is the son of Mary. That he has been called the son of Mary. Third is he's been mentioned as the messiah now when it comes to the differences in beliefs in regards to Hazrat Isa the main differences is that the Christian school of thought believe that Jesus is the son of God 
Whereas we say that Jesus is not the Son of God, but he is a great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reason we say this is that we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or God cannot be compounded in human shape. For him to have for God to have an offspring, he is compounded in a human body. We believe that the birth of Hazrat Isa was through divine mercy. We say that the birth of Jesus was a miraculous birth, as was the miracles of Prophet Isa. Second difference is that the Christians believe that Jesus was killed on the cross and that he returned after three days. Whereas our school of thought, we say that no, Jesus was removed from this earth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the might and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only to reappear at the end of times to bring about justice and equality with the Imam of our time. This is the high regard that we hold, Hazrat Isa, in our school of thought. The biggest misconception that we have, especially of our children, is that how do they narrate the events of Hazrat Isa to the children? How do they celebrate, for example, Christmas? Do they celebrate? Should we celebrate Christmas by having the Christmas dinner, the turkey, the fulfillings, and whatever they have have with the Christmas, or? do we do something else or shouldn't we celebrate we must understand that celebrating the birth of the prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not go against our religion does not go against our belief as long as we are celebrating the birth of jesus as a prophet of god by acting upon and I always say this, that when we celebrate the birth of our own prophet, or when we celebrate the birth of the Ahlul Bayt, how should we celebrate? The best way of celebrating the Ahlul Bayt, the best way of remembering Prophet, prophet Jesus or Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is to make sure that we act upon their teachings. That is the best way to remember. That is the best way to celebrate the birth of these personality these infallible personalities <clears throat> that they have been sent down by god onto this earth to guide mankind to a stage where they can become the best of god's creation and when we look at hazrat isa <clears throat> and i would advise our youth to study jesus study jesus from both perspectives the christian per perspective as well as the muslim perspective and see the commonalities that we see within our schools of thought so that we can further advocate today unfortunately what happens is that as a muslim i'm so busy defending my own religion that i forget about other religions especially the monotheistic religions if you wish to for example if, if a christian needs to defend his religion he only thinks about christianity they forget that our religions, our schools of thought are interlinked. Why? Because they're interlinked through the messengers of God. Because their message was the same. Their message has always been the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one God, and the betterment of humanity. And I'll give you the example of the Quran. The Quran which has over 6,000 ayats. <clears throat> Majority of the ayats or majority of the Quran is based upon how to become better human beings how to better humanity the best way to better humanity is to better our souls the best way to better our souls is to study and try to emulate those infallible personalities that have been sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perfect mankind and one of these infallible personalities is the prophet jesus now christmas christmas that we are celebrating that we are remembering we must make sure that yes to keep the children happy 
you go about and have the Christmas dinner or the Christmas lunch. But at the same time, your purpose should be that you educate yourselves in regards to us at the Isa. That if someone was to ask you, for example, today, unfortunately, society, our society is such that when someone asks you about Christmas, all of a sudden we frown and we turn around and say that we don't celebrate Christmas. Question we must ask ourselves is that is there any harm in us celebrating Christmas as long as we are celebrating within the four frames of Islam? Because I am celebrating the birth of a prophet of God. Celebrating the birth of a prophet of God is not innovation, for example. It does not go against my religion. In fact, it does not even go against humanity. As long as whatever I do in regards to the celebration is within the laws of Islam. And I say that in regards to every celebration that takes place within the Islamic world. Add Christmas to it. And I've seen it that when Islamic centers publish uh, their yearly calendars. They put Christmas Day and Christmas Boxing Day on their calendars because it is part of the British calendar, social year. But I would go further and say that to the Islamic centers who do publish these calendars, that on Christmas Day, hold a small gathering at your center. Celebrate the birth of Jesus. Propagate the message of Jesus. How prophet Jesus helped society. And I mentioned that one of the miracles was helping the ill and the lepers. How do we treat those who are sick in our society? Do we keep, especially during this pandemic, right? You have, you must have heard of numerous stories about, and it's all, it's in the, it's in the news, it's in the media, that you have the elderly who have not been able to go out to get food. You have the elderly who have been shielded by the government, yet to a certain extent have not been able to receive the help that they are in need of. Now, how many of us as Muslims, or not even as Muslims, as human beings, how many of us have gone out of our way to see the elderly within our community, the elderly who live around our houses, have we gone and knocked on, to, on their doors? And have we asked them that, is there anything that you are in need of? I'm, I am young, I'm active, I'm able, for example, I'm able to go do your shopping for you when I go and do my own shopping. Is there anything else that you are in need of that we can help you with? This is the message of Christmas. This should be the message of Christmas, especially this year, during this pandemic, uncertain times. That, yeah? and I don't, we've all been listening to the news and the backlog of trailers and, tr and trucks and lorries on the border where there's been a shortage of food. They're announcing there might be a shortage of food or whatnot. Have we been able to go out into our community, not looking at race, culture or color? All we look at is that they are fellow human beings like me and you. Can I help them? Are they in need? And if the Prophet, whether it be Prophet Muhammad or Prophet Jesus, if they were present in today's time, what would they have announced? Would they have said that, no, stay at home and protect yourselves? Or no, they would have said, or they themselves would have been out on the street helping those who are in need. Celebrating Christmas, not just this year, but years to come. How am I able to pass on the message of Prophet Jesus as a Muslim? What is the importance of Jesus in Islam? And the best way to propagate any message is through your behavior, and through your characteristics and through your actions. Now, this is, today we are celebrating Christmas, Christmas Day. Rather than me sitting at home, should I go out, knock on the door, my next door neighbor, who is, it doesn't matter what 
race, what religion, what color he is. How can I come to his help if he is in need of it? I remember at our center, we announced during the, during the lockdown that those who are in need, messages so that we can do your shopping, for example. How many of our youth have been able to do this or have gone out of their own initiative? This is the message of Islam. This is the message of Christianity. This is the message of Judaism. This is the message of the prophets of Islam, all 124,000 prophets. The first and sole message was the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second message being betterment of humanity. And this is what the Christmas special should be this year. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم اقنع كل فقير اللهم اشفق كل جايع اللهم اكسب كل عريان اللهم اغض دين كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل عصير اللهم اصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشف كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوى حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اغنى الدين واغننا من الفقر إنك على كل شيء قدير صلوات الله وسلم صلى الله محمد وعلى محمد Thank you so much, uh, Sayyidna. As you said, you know, it's it's the main message of Christmas, uh, especially nowadays, as you said, it's, it's, it's sort of being lost uh, and mixed with the cultural aspect of Christmas. And Christmas is becoming something more of a, a, a cultural uh, gathering rather than a the true meaning of, of Christmas, which is obviously the birth of, uh, of Prophet Jesus. And as you said, there's a lot of similarities as well as differences between the the, the the Islamic perspective and the uh, the, Christ, the Christianity perspective and you know even looking yeah. back at the Old Testament Sayyidna uh, you, you, we could all we could almost say that we are better Christians than most Christians because the 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 the, um, the things that the Old Testament say uh, for example you know the consumption of pork or the consumption of alcohol it was all forbidden and the, the covering of the hair for, for the woman is all forbidden. Obviously the New Testament changed that, but this New Testament was written years and years after uh, Jesus Christ and written by people that weren't really there when Jesus was there. So of course, this is what separates the, the, the Islamic perspective uh, from, from, from the, the, um, the Christian perspective. So what, what can the, we as a community do, uh, to, um, community do in terms of unification, because unity is one of the most important aspects in this day and age, especially when the media is pushing through a disunity and a, 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 a incentive to go against each other. I mean, the best way for unity, first, we must understand that we cannot be united on the basis of ignorance. For us to unite, we need to be educated. We need to be enlightened. For that, we need to study all forms of societies and cultures. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are good and bad in all societies today. And our biggest fault that I see <clears throat> is that, yes, we need to integrate within society, within the Western society. But we must understand that integrating into Western society does not me mean that we forget our own values and cultures as Muslims. As a practicing Muslim, we can integrate into Western society. As long as we are able to integrate seamlessly into society, without losing my culture my values and my teachings i believe unity can be found <clears throat> but for that once again it comes down that we must educate ourselves we must exactly. pick up books i mean i always say that today the source of all knowledge is on google both good and bad but how many of us go on google for the sake of knowledge and how many of us gone to go on to Netflix or Amazon Prime or other numerous outlets to watch a movie? So, 
as long as we are able to educate ourselves in the correct manner we have no issues with uniting with other schools of thought with other religions with other cultures with other societies Ascent. And of course, the main message being that, as you said, we're not really different schools of thoughts, but rather so uh, one religion just with some differences, uh, almost like sex, uh, you could you could say. Uh, but the only thing is, obviously, we're all Abrahamic religions. We all come from Abrahamic religions. Yeah. So in essence, we all worship the same God. And we do have a lot of prophets that are similar. You know, also in the, the Christians, they also believe in Moses. They also believe in uh, Hazrat Noah, etc. So, you know, these, these yeah. kind of um, similarities are things that we should, inshallah, learn and, and, and guide and cause unification from it. But as Muslims and as Christians even, what sorts of lessons did the Prophet Jesus teach us? And what sorts of, uh, sorts of lessons can we take, especially for the young generation? What, what can they take on Christmas? You know, get rid of the the cultural aspect of Chris, uh, christmas just look at the religious aspect the spiritual aspect what can young muslims and christians learn from jesus christ this when we take into consideration the hadith of amir al-mu'minin ali ibn abi talib where he says that we as humans we are either brothers in faith or equals in humanity and if you look at the message of Prophet Isa or Jesus. We see that Prophet Isa or Jesus did not look at, once again, color, race, religion. All he saw in front of him were human beings. This is what we as youngsters should look towards. We unfortunately, as Muslims today, the way I see it is that we as Muslims constantly have our shields up. That we're always looking at people, at others from a different perspective. We always think at the first thing that pops into my mind when I see someone who is a non-Muslim is his religion, unfortunately. And we start comparing our religions. But if we took religion aside and we looked at it, looked at the person in front of me as a human being, just like myself, then once again, we will see far more commonalities between each other. And that just by me looking at someone through the lens of a human being, naturally those divisions that or those walls that I have created in front of me start to disappear themselves. Now, I stop looking towards religion as an excuse. I stop looking at him from a religious perspective. I start looking at him from a human being that he now may he now has the same problems that I face. He is facing the same issues that I am facing. Now, can we unite and try and get rid of these same issues together? This is how we have to start looking at others. And unfortunately, media has a very important role in this. And unfortunately, the media is playing a very negative image on how they portray different religions in media. That the non-Muslims have already created a, certain, a world within themselves about Islam and Muslims. The same way we have created a world in regards to non-Muslims in our own minds. And we only see it from that lens. Once we start getting rid of religion or our misunderstanding and misconception about one another's belief and religion, then we will naturally start to unite. We will naturally start to become at one with one another. Uh, and the come... main... Yes. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I was just saying, and you see it around the globe how people of different religions, different cultures are living peacefully side by side with no discrimination against each other. Excellent. And of course, the main goal is tolerance and uh, unity. And, you know, unfortunately, 
I say it now, you see, even within the, 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 the sects of Islam and the different sects that Islam promotes, even in an Islamic government, there are so many uh, rules and regulations for unity and for unification and for tolerance. But unfortunately, we living in a, a country that is predominantly Christians, you see a lot of Muslims propagating against the, their religion, against them and causing disunity. So how, how do we as the youth, especially because the youth, you know, they paved the way for the next generation. They are the next generation and they paved the way for a better future. So what can what sort of advice can you give to the youth who are who are seeing this, who are seeing this disunity from one side, the media and the other side, from their own religions, from their own homes, even sometimes that are promoting this sort of this anger, this hatred towards other religions. First and foremost is rid yourself of ignorance. You have the hadith of the Holy Prophet. You have numerous hadith from the Holy Prophet. The first being is that seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. The second is seek knowledge even if it takes you to the walls of China. The importance that the Prophet has enforced in regards to seeking knowledge. We must understand that knowledge overpowers all. Today you talk about nuclear weapons and tanks and military warfare. We must understand that knowledge is the biggest nuke in existence. That knowledge, and please don't take me wrong and don't misquote this. Knowledge is the greatest weapon that we have, as well as being the greatest defensive shield that we have. Through knowledge, we are able to rid ourselves of all types of discrimination. And when you look at majority of the world wars that take place is all based upon discrimination. Knowledge is there to rid discrimination from within us. And I always say this, you study both sides and come to your own. God has given you intellect. That is what makes us different from the normal animals. We are called Hewan and Nata. We have intellect. That intellect is there to be used. Seek knowledge from everywhere. As long as that in the intention of seeking knowledge is to make yourself better. The minute I see, start to seek knowledge to make myself better, those around me will naturally start to become better, will start to change. But once again, it comes down to as long as I am willing to change myself. There's no point in me having numerous PhDs, but not changing myself. As long as whatever I study, I study with the intention of changing myself for the betterment. I hope that answers the question. And sense <laughs> exactly and of course uh, there's a very well known quote that says change begins when you change yourself first before you can even think about changing the community and you know the different ideologies around the world and as you said most of the wars around the world either come from discrimination or ignorance or even a lack of education you know you see a lot of wars between even muslims killing other muslims or Christians and Muslims fighting, etc., etc. So, unfortunately, all of this stems from 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 ignorance and from discrimination. But now, as you said, we have no excuse. Said that you, have, you said something that is very true that we have Google, and Google, you know, it's it's one of the main source of of knowledge, and you can just Google something if you are you know uncertain of it, and you can use books, libraries online now, which is making it, making it much more accessible. Show the previous generation, you know, they can they can make an excuse of unable, uh, you know, being ignorant or being uh, uneducated because, you know, there, there was a lack of accessibility. So, of course, this is something that we should promote. I mean, like I say that in today's day and age, the answer that I do not know is not justifiable anymore. Because you have access to scholars. You have access to books. You have all the access to knowledge. So for me to turn around and say that I do not know or I did not know is not justifiable. Now we can no longer hide behind the sentence. Especially when it comes to our matters of religion and matters of society and culture. 
as a whole it is our responsibility to educate our souls in human moral values Ahsant. and and do you think Sayyidina that maybe the the communities you know the muslim communities uh, in this country and even around the world, should take an initiative and and start doing these uh, these these you know these sessions where uh, people from Christianity, people from Judaism, people from Islam come together and discuss and and talk and and have conversations in which uh, they can learn from each other instead of just you know having their you know you see a lot of for example a lot of programs where only muslims are invited or only you know a lot of christians have their programs where only christians are invited so do, do you not think that it, it would be good where the communities the elders especially take take an initiative even the youth you know because you know they they are the ones who are less ignorant than the previous generation to take an initiative and start these conversational uh topics and have these intellectual discussions no doubt, I believe it's very important to hold these kind of, these types of interfaith events where we invite not just I've been to numerous interfaith events and what I've seen is that majority of the people who attend these events are those who are retired. I've also been to certain interfaith events which are just uh, events publicity events we need to change the layout of these interfaith events we need to start holding interfaith events for example at universities where you have these student organizations from all schools of thought that have their own student body organizations they should hold interfaith amongst themselves I mean, it's well and good me holding an interfaith event at my mosque, but there's no point if the attendees are all, for example, retired. I want to make sure that those people who attend these interfaith events are those who are able to bring about change in their communities. Those youth who are active in their communities. And a lot of peace and love and harmony can be spread through these interfaith. A lot of misconceptions and misunderstanding about one another's religions can be resolved. I mean, how many non-Muslims know that Prophet Isa has been mentioned more times than Prophet Muhammad in the Quran? How many people know that there is a whole surah on Bibi Maryam, the mother of Hazrat Isa in the Holy Quran? Very few. If we started to propagate this, for example, I see someone who is a Christian, and I say, oh, by the way, do you know that we have, Jesus has been mentioned more times in the Quran than our own prophet has. My prophet who brought that Quran down, he's been mentioned less times than the Holy Prophet Jesus. Just that in itself is a bomb exploding in his mind. That he must then naturally start to wonder, hold on, the Quran, which is the book of the Muslims, why has Jesus been mentioned more times in their holy book than their own prophet? It's something that is intriguing for non-Muslim. It's the same when I tell, uh, for example, the Jews that Moses has been mentioned so many times in the Holy Quran. That when we look at Surah Baqarah, Surah Baqarah is related to Hazrat Musa. It makes them wonder. It makes them ponder upon the Quran and the message of Islam. Ahsan, and it's very important to 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 seek the similarities more so. The differences exactly. between the Abrahamic uh, religions, and this brings up just just a small uh, subtopic here, uh, Sayyidna. You know, just just you know, shying away because you know, as you said, that when you have these interfaith programs, uh, you see a lot of uh, retired people, and unfortunately, this is the case even with Christmas itself. You see, the the meaning of Christmas has become more cultural rather than it is religious and spiritual, and that's because you know, over time, 
Uh, unfortunately, the meaning of religion is dying out and, you know, slowly people are shying away from religion. So what, what can we do in order to get people back towards, you know, the right path, the, 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 the spiritual aspect of whether it's just Christmas or just in general, the, the spiritual aspect of religion? First things first is we need to stop thinking of religion as religion. The minute we start thinking of religion as a religion, it becomes a burden upon me. I must think of my religion as my way of life. The minute I start to think of, for example, Islam as my way of life, everything within Islam becomes a part of my life. And it becomes a part of my daily habit. But the minute I start thinking of Islam, because of our lack of knowledge, when it comes to matters of religion, we start thinking of everything as a burden upon me. We live the life of, majority live the life of Jekyll and Hyde. There are certain aspects of their day, daily life or certain times of the 24 hours, which is completely based upon religion, for example. Then there's another aspect of their time, which is not based upon religion. We must make sure that the whole 24 hour period is based upon Islamic teachings and religious teachings. I mean, when we look at the religion of Islam, we see that Islam teaches us everything on how to do business, how to look after our society, our culture, our values. It teaches us everything even down to personal hygiene Islam tells us about. A religion which tells us about personal hygiene cannot be classified as a religion but a way of life. So that is the first step that we must take is to stop thinking of Islam as a religion but start thinking of Islam as a way of life. The minute we start thinking of Islam as a way of life everything comes natural to us everything we become at one with religion today we are not at one with religion the minute we become at one with religion everything is simplified for us everything falls in place as if you're making you're solving a puzzle Ahsan, and of course, that is the main step is to see as you said not see uh, islam as a, a religion or a burden but see it as a way of life. And it's very good advice, inshallah, for the youth to see it. And because, you know, people start losing motivation when they see it as a, a chore or, or something that they have to do uh, rather than exactly. something that they want to do, for example. Just going back to the topic of, of Jesus, you know, just before we end the program, said, now, can you sum up in a word or, or a sentence rather, can you sum up the status of Jesus Christ in the religion of Islam and the status of uh, Jesus Christ in the religion of Christianity and why it's so similar? I believe we can simplify or you said to put the importance of Isa of Jesus in one sentence from an Islamic perspective and from a Christian perspective. There's one word which is used in both religions and that is the Messiah. That is the importance of Jesus in Islam, the fact that he is the Messiah. That is also Jesus in one word in Christianity. that he is the messiah that for christian belief is that he was the messiah when he was killed and he came back to life life after three days for us he is the messiah when that when on the day of judgment or before the end of times he will reappear with the imam of our time to bring about justice and rid the world of oppression and injustice. That is what we say in, in 
modern day Jesus in a nutshell. That he is the Messiah in both schools of thought. That the prophet of God has been sent to better humanity and we are still able to better ourselves through studying Jesus Christ. Excellent. And that is, you know, the main, the main, main topic that we were discussing. And I hope that people that are watching uh, at home or wherever you're watching from on this, on this Christmas uh, day, or if you're watching later, uh, later on, if, you know, and you're watching as if, as a Christian, I hope that a lot of the main uh, misconceptions were clear. Then you, you would understand that there are a lot of similarities between us two and the main goal that both Prophet uh, Jesus and Prophet Muhammad uh, portrayed are similar and very similar because they were both sent by the same God. You know, we should all uh, unite together as one instead of creating uh, this unity. Sayyidna, thank you so much. I, I, I hope that the viewers were able to um, gain as much knowledge as I was. I thank you so much for taking your time off. I, I understand it was very last minute for you. So I thank you so much, you know, uh, sometimes these things happen and thank you so much for enlightening us, Aidna. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank you to me. The and, and thank you for the viewers for watching, inshallah, we were able to, even just 1% if we were able to uh, help you in your, in your journey and enlighten you a bit. And I hope that you enjoy your day. Uh, if you're celebrating Christmas, I hope that you enjoy uh, Christmas. If you are just watching as a Muslim, I hope that you understand how important uh, Jesus Christ is in the religion of Islam. Thank you so much for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.